Well, the day of reckoning has come. We get to try the die. Well, in truth, this is the second time I've run the die. I've already done it once. Uh, and uh, it worked quite well, but generally you learn a few things the first time you run a die, and the second time you take those into account, um, and it tends to run a bit better. So I thought I would repeat the uh, videoing uh, and see whether it goes a bit better this time. First thing, we light the torch on the die. Oops, if we can get a match to work, of course. Right, now we'll light the furnace and I might just reposition the camera so that you can catch a bit of that. Get a blower. There are gloves. I think it's uh, just about hot enough uh, to uh, spray up. According to this uh, device, it's about 200 to 250 centigrade. These things are, are all right for testing this sort of temperature, but don't ever use them for testing your metal temperature. The emissivity of molten metal is all over the place, and you don't get a good reading. You can verify that, take a reading of your molten aluminium, scrape the dross to one side, take another reading, it'll be quite different. Wait a couple of minutes, take another reading, and it'll be different again. So they're useless for molten metal, but they're all right for this sort of thing. Okay, let's see if we can get some uh, dye spray on this. This uh, first spray is uh, an insulating dye coat, medium sort of, uh, coarseness I guess or fineness whatever you like to call it and it's made by a company called Vasico and it is called 14EWS now if only I can get this out past the burner which is a bit tricky not a lot of room here right a bit of a white with some steel wool <coughs> and it's this face here I'm interested in getting some spray on That's probably enough for that. <coughs> I'll stick that on the furnace to stay warm. <coughs> and I'll now try and do this half. not really hot enough the spray is starting to fall off a little which is a bit of a worry
yeah, it certainly is a bit of a worry. I'll stick this one on the furnace to keep warm, I think. <coughs> and we'll spray this half of the dye. Now, I'll use a different spray on this. I won't use the coarse, uh, or, or the, sorry, the insulating spray. I'll simply use the lubricating spray. It's a finer finish, but it should give me a better looking part. So this is the boron nitride based spray by uh, ZYP Coatings in America. And it's, um, it's called ZY, uh, sorry, it's called Release Coat Blue. Okay, getting some of it there. This is a bit of an experiment. I've never actually done a job where I've only used this spray uh, on the cavity. So it'll be interesting to see if it works or not. <laughs> oh, a little awkward with the burner in the way there. Oh, it certainly is. A little more maybe around there. That's not too bad. That should do. I'll now put some of it on uh, these faces here, that'll do, and I'll just put some also on the um, feeder cavity, because this spray actually repels metal, so it'll stop any tendency to stick in the feeder cavities. Now we'll pop that one back, and now the other one. The one that's had the trouble with the, some of the spray lifting. Yeah, it's not good. Oh, and it's a bit hot under my hand there through the glove. I would normally take these and spray them on a bench, but <laughs> wouldn't be able to see what I was doing then. But spraying it here like this is most, most awkward. Whoa, boy, is it ever. Ah. Most awkward indeed. Right up. Let's see if we can put a bit of spray on that. That's coming a bit better. This face doesn't actually matter much because the back part of the part of the casting that forms against it gets completely lineage anyway. Some on the uh, See the cavities again. Right. right, the metal's all fluxed off, clean, hot enough. I've got just under 740 degrees centigrade. I think that's good to go. Uh, we'll remove the torch. Very awkward to film this because everything moves. Right, first for the day, as they say. That looks pretty good. Now last time when I had a thicker coating on uh, these feeders, it took about two minutes to go solid. So I'm interested to see whether it's any quicker this time. I'm hopeful that it will be a bit quicker. Pull the two skulls out of there while I'm at it. starting to go solid it's still got a pretty big pretty big amount of liquid there yet but yeah starting let's see if we can get anything apart here yes yes That's 
quite a sweet looking little casting. I'm quite happy with that one. I think we've got a, a die up and running and producing nice castings. Yes, this time uh, the basins are better sized. Last time they were a bit big and I couldn't fill them as high as I wanted to. This time when I fill them so that the metal is uh, running about halfway up into the feeders um, before I tilt it back, uh, I've now got it right to the top like this when it's all finished. So that's about ideal, I think. Ah oh, yes, they're going solid much quicker than last time, so this should be a quicker run. That's what we want. Well, that's four done. Only another 146 to go. Oh dear. <laughs> I'll just have a good look at a casting or two to make certain everything's all right. I suspect I could actually do with the metal a little hotter. There's some rounding on the uh, on the, ha, the edges here. Uh, those edges are, are nice and sharp though. Everything else is pretty good. Yes, I think that's okay. Just maybe I'll get the metal a little warmer. Flick the two skulls out of the way. Right. Let's open the die. Pull the last two out. There we go. One. Two. Close the die carefully. Swing it into the four position. liquid there. Yep. It's taking a little longer than I'd like, partly because the metal has got a bit hotter than uh, I'd prefer it. I think we're nearly at 770 and I want about 750. Solid enough now, I think, to get them out. Over 
up again. Bikes ID. So we're a bit over halfway. Quite yet. It should be about it. morning's work. I think I wound up getting 160 of them because there's uh, eight rows of 20. According to me that's 160. Now all I've got to do of course is cut the feeders off and then linish the area where I cut them off from which will take me some hours. It's a lovely boring sort of a job. We'll have another look at them when I've finished doing that. Here we are now at the end of the job. In fact, it's the uh, second run of the die we're looking at here. The, there's 160 castings there. The first run actually got a, a few more, I think 166. All that I had to do following the casting was to cut the feeders off the back uh, and then linish the back where the feeder was removed from so that I wind up uh, getting a tolerably flat sort of surface only done on a disc sander. Uh, the next little job is to throw them in the box and ring the customer up and that's the end of it. So the die has worked and you can cast aluminium into an aluminium die and get away with it, well, at least for some time. I don't know how, but so far I have 300 and, nearly 330 parts uh, and uh, we just wait to see whether I get the order for a thousand and if I do, if the die will last that long.